We arrived in San Miguel de Allende and got an Airbnb in one of these little communities, which I'm finding are kind of common in Mexico. These large condominium projects where you can live behind a gated community with guards um, while, while the rest of Mexico is outside your walls. We stayed in this little orange unit. And Miguel also has a lot of building, a lot of growth going on there. Today we've landed in San Miguel de Allende. We're gonna go check that out. It's a lot like Guanajuato, but uh, everybody in Guanajuato said you can't leave Guanajuato until you see San Miguel. So we're over here, supposed to be a lot of Americans, like 25,000 Americans live here. So maybe we won't have to speak broken Spanish all the time, but a lot of stuff to see. And I'm guessing there's probably a few more cathedrals. So we'll go check it out. We'll see what they got in this town. San Miguel de Allende is named after two people. Juan de San Miguel, who was a famous church friar back in the day, and Ignacio Allende, who was a martyr in the Independence War of Mexico and was killed. This is another beautiful Mexican city with tons of color, thousands of years of history. San Miguel is a very friendly city. For Americans to move here, there's a lot of conveniences, a lot of uh, American type things. If you want to move, if you want to travel to a place in Mexico outside of the touristy Cancun, the Puerto Vallartas, this is a very good place where you can get a mix of American culture that you need and some pretty hardcore Spanish culture. It's kind of a melting pot. San Miguel is also a very important place for the Mexican Independence War. It's where Ignacio Allende gathered the first troops together, start the war, and then marched on to Guanajuato for the first attack and the first battle. I got a gordita with some beef thing. And it, we all, six of us, tried it, and it tastes like chocolate. Chocolate with the hint of beef. Then I will not be eating anymore. <laughs> like Hershey's chocolate with the hint of jerky. <laughs> The cathedral in San Miguel is something like we've never seen before. It's another amazing cathedral, but the facade, the exterior is completely different than the other cathedrals in Mexico. The cathedral was built in the 17th century, but in 1880, Zeffarino Gutierrez, an indigenous bricklayer, reconstructed the facade to this Gothic look. He used the inspirations from postcards he received from churches in Europe. Walk these streets of San Miguel. My take is it takes a lot more money here, a lot more Americans, a lot less Spanish. I don't feel like there was as much culture as Guanajuato. Beautiful city, beautiful city, but it's a lot different. Things are a little more closed off behind paywalls. You know, you got like in all these places. It's different. If you're traveling with kids, you're gonna to go to every market in Mexico. You're gonna visit every single gift booth there is everywhere and look at every single foreign made, touristy junk possible. So we do. Though San Miguel does have some of the most amazing silver in these shops that we've ever seen. This place we visited was just amazing. About eight kilometers outside of San Miguel, is this cathedral called Atotonilco, which has a little town of about 600 people. It just really is weird that it's out here. It was built in the 18th century by Father Luis Felipe Nero de Arofro, who, according to him, had a vision from Jesus wearing a crown of thorns to build this. The murals took 30 years to paint and they were done by Antonio Martes de Pocosangre. It's very hard in a video to describe this place, but if you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's not a painting in here that's not in those chapters. It tells the complete story of Christ from birth to death, crucifixion, resurrection, everything. It's just, I've never seen anything like that.
Another cool thing about this cathedral is on his way out, Ignacio Allende in 1810, on his way to Guanajuato to start the Independence War of Mexico, stopped here and took an image of the Virgin of Guadalupe to carry with them into battle. The next day we visited Canada de la Virgin, and I'm not even gonna try to say that in Spanish. You see behind me, we're walking the original road. The Mayans used, they came from San Miguel, which is like 30 miles away. Came through that gorge down there. And these walls are the original sides to the road from back then. I was just fascinated by this place. It had just recently been excavated in 2011. There are still complexes in this that haven't been excavated. They're waiting for funding. It's just fresh, fresh history coming out. Canada de la Virgin is the northernmost settlement in the Mesoamerican people. Mesoamerica in Mexico and down and through Central America is the society that held the Mayans, the Aztecs, a lot of different groups. These were the Atomis. The Mesoamerican people were one of only three people in the history of the world who independently developed handwriting. Reasons we don't know, the Atomi had left this place by about 1050 AD, so they were long gone before the Spanish ever got here. Apparently, the Atomi were much smaller than Porter. 